Have you ever felt like where, like, I need something so desperately and I can't do it on my own? Yeah. I wonder if anybody, you feel that way today, like, man, I need a breakthrough. I, I need deliverance, right? Like, I need healing. I'm desperate for healing. I can't, I can't do it on my own. There's things, there's things in life where I've given it all I got. I, I've thought all I could think. I've tried everything and, and, I, and I, I've got nothing. Lord, I need you to do what only you can do. So God, c- come and move. I, I, need, I need you to show up. God, I'm standing. Maybe this is you today. God, I'm standing what feels like a dead end and the Red Sea is in front of me and my enemies are after me. Like, man, God, I I need you. I'm in the middle of the fiery furnace today and I cannot get out. I need you to show up. God, I've been thrown into the lion's den. I need you to show up because... I got news for you. When God shows up, miracles happen. Miracles happen. So God, today we pray, God, that miracles happen. God, I pray that you will do what only you can do. God, because then only you will get the glory and only you will get the credit. God, when you do what only you can do, God, that's what we're believing for today. We love you. In Jesus' name, we all say, amen, amen, amen. Amen. I don't know, I I really felt the spirit of the Lord telling me that many of you are in the middle today of something and you have no idea how you're going to get through it. And God wanted me to preach this sermon on these two words, and the words are all things. But then he gave me this phrase and dropped this little phrase in my heart, and he said, Travis, all things means all things. That's the title of today's sermon. All things means all things. I want you to say that out loud. All things means all things. Come on, prophesy and tell your best friend that you came to church with today. All things means all things. See, Scripture says in Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, maybe you heard this verse. It's one of the most quoted Scriptures in the Bible. He says, I can do all things. Let's read it together. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Let's read it again a little bit louder. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Just even a little bit. Let's turn up the volume. Ready? I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. All things means all things. Yeah, not some things, not certain things, not everything except that thing. Not they get their healing, but I don't. Not their child's gonna be set free, but not mine. All things means all things. All things means all things. And I wanna give you three thoughts today about all things. The first is that we just read it. Number one, if you're taking notes, you should be taking notes anytime ever. A preacher is preaching the word because your notes are going to live far longer than your memory. So number one is that I can do all things through Christ. I can do all things through Christ. All things means all things. If you're a Christian today, if you're a man of God, a word uh, for your life today is that you need to have an I can attitude, an I can outlook in life because we're surrounded by I can't culture. We're surrounded by that's impossible culture. If you are a believer, I'm talking to the men and women of God who have the power of the Holy Spirit dwelling with inside of them, that you have to have an I can attitude. 
I can attitude, not because of your strength, not because of your intelligence, not because of your money or your wealth, not because of your good looks or your popularity, not because of your abilities or your talents or your gifts, but because of God's strength. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I love this verse. I love top 10, top 10 verses of my life. This verse has ministered to me and gotten me through thousands, and I mean thousands of things in my life. Most of you know, just a year and a half ago, a year and a half ago, this verse ministered to me a year and a half ago is I had a brain bleed and a hemorrhagic stroke and I was ambulanced to one hospital and helicoptered to a level one trauma center and lost my speech and my memory and my cognition and my motor skills. I lost my sense of feeling on the entire right side of my body. Listen, I got news for you today. It's still numb. Right now, right this moment, the whole right side of my body is numb. It's not as numb as it was the first six months. Those first six months, you could have stabbed me, you could have lit me on fire, and I would not have even known. Today, I would know. I would know. I'm numb still. There's better feeling, but it's almost worse because it, it, people say, what does it feel like? It feels like the entire right side of my body is asleep. When your foot falls asleep and it's tingling, it feels like almost like I got a bag of sand in my shoe inside of the skin of my foot. Yeah, this is every day, all day. It doesn't go away. There's no relief. It's always tingling. It's always asleep. Part of my rehab, I, it wasn't even that long ago, I remember part of my rehab was sticking my hand inside of a bowl of dry rice and I had to pull objects out and define the objects without looking at them, only by feel. I don't know what that is. That's a button. I don't know what that is. I have no idea. Oh, it's a penny. I have no idea what that is. Oh, it's, it's, a, it's a bean or it's a, a paper clip. This was as early as one year ago where I'm, I'm in rehab. There were times, church, where I was so frustrated. You guys see this and you make your judgments and your assessments based on what you see right here. What I'm trying to tell you is I'm still in the middle of the battle, but I believe that I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I believe that he is my strength for this particular moment. There are times when I was so frustrated in rehab and I would be crying. There were times that I couldn't feel and I couldn't identify what these objects were that I was holding and I would keep telling myself God I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength God I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength God I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength I remember about a month after my stroke maybe not even we had a family get together and we were in the backyard and I went to throw a football to my son Josiah and I, I couldn't throw it. I went to throw the football and it just went directly to the ground. I burst into tears. I'm not talking about, I bawled like a five-year-old that got injured. I am crying my eyes out. I am desperate, God. See, some of you today, you're desperate for God. You need God to do what only God can do. And for me, the fact is, is that I am still battling. I am still in a fight. We can look at the external in people's lives and make assessments, can't we? Aren't we good at that? Oh yeah, we can look at the external and we make our arrogant, prideful judgments. I am still battling. My knee feels like a softball tingling right now. It's just, it's just nerve damage 
that I continue to say, God, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Some of you, you need to start quoting that scripture all day and every day. God, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. The fact is, is that even writing my sermons, you know, it's the most frustrating thing I do all week is writing a sermon. It's the most frustrating thing, my hand's numb. Imagine writing a sermon and your hand is frozen or it's fallen completely asleep and you can't, you can't use your fingers like you used to use them. This is what I do. This is the call of God on my life. And I get so frustrated at times when I'm writing. Today's sermon was incredibly challenging. My right hand, my right fingers, the tingle, it never goes away. It takes me longer, far longer to write a sermon than it was before the stroke. I'm not here for my flowers. I'm here to tell you that I know what it's like to go through hell. And I need God to do what only God can do. And I believe for you that God can do all things through his son and will give you strength. I can do all things. I can do all things. Listen, every sermon that I write since the stroke, I say, devil up yours. God did it again. Look what God did again. He gave another victory and another victory. And it might have taken me twice as long or three times as long, but we got another sermon written for the name of Jesus Christ and for the hope of our church community. Listen, sometimes you got to fight. Sometimes you got to fight. And God told me to tell you, because many of you are up against some incredibly hard things today. He wanted me to remind you that you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. Because all things means all things. Because all things means all things. I don't know what things that you're facing today, but you can do this. You can do this. You can do all things. You might be facing the seemingly impossible. You might be facing some impossible situations in your life, but all things means all things. All things means all things, whether it's your health, whether it's your marriage, whether it's your relationship, whether it's your emotions, whether it's fear, whether it's anxiety, depression, guilt, shame. I don't know what it is. Failure. You can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. The second thing is this. Write this down. With God, all things are possible. With God, all things are possible. Jesus said in Matthew 19, 26, he said, with man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Come on, that's good. That's good. I don't know if you remember this scripture. It's very quoted but it's Zechariah chapter four, verse six. And I wanna quote the scripture, but I wanna give you the background of this particular scripture as well, because the word of the Lord said, then he said to me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Yeah, we love this part, and I do too. Not by might, not by power, and not by my own strength, and not by my own skill, and not by my own intel. No, not by might, not by power, but by, by what? By his what? By his what? By his spirit, says the Lord. I can do all things through Christ, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit today. Listen, 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 because somebody's like, man, I could never forgive them. No, you couldn't. Not in your own strength, but in God's strength, in God's strength, by his spirit, you can forgive. And listen, when you can learn to forgive, you'll learn to live again. 
Not by might, not by power. I can have all the might and all the power. No, it's by the spirit of the living God. God is speaking to Zerubbabel, who is the governor at the time of Judea. That's the background. He's the governor of a, of a, of a nation, of a, of a backslidden people, and he's the governor of Judea alongside of the high priest Joshua. And the Bible tells us they were returning from exile and they had a vision to rebuild the temple of God. And in their vision, they ran into challenge after challenge, after trial, after trial, after obstacle, after obstacle. They ran into one wall and then they ran into the next wall and they came up against setback after setback and then they became discouraged. I know about that. I know about that. And they came to a place where they didn't know if they could do it. They came to a place where they didn't know if they could accomplish what was in their heart. See, that's a lot of us today. I don't know if I can do this, PT. I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I can hang in there in this marriage. I don't know if I can face this giant. I don't know. I don't know if I can face this giant again. That's a lot of people today. I don't know. I don't know. I don't even know what to do. I don't know how to do it. I can't, I can't do this on my own. And the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel was, this is going to happen. It is going to happen because all things are possible. It is going to happen, but not by might and not by power, but by my spirit. Says the Lord. See, maybe today you're a modern day Zerubbabel and you've faced challenge after challenge and trial after trial and setback for setback and you don't know how you're going to get through it. And God wants you to know you're going to get through it. You're going to get through it by his spirit. The spirit of God. You're not going to be able to think your way through it. Have you ever done that? Tried to think your way through it? You're not going to be able to think your way out of it. You're not going to be able to work your way through it. You're not going to be able to buy your way through it or pay your way through it. Hey, somebody needs this word right now. You need to stop trying to manipulate somebody or some situation. You're not going to be able to manipulate your way through it. It's going to be by the Spirit of God. Lay down the manipulation. Lay it down at the feet of God and watch God do what only God can do. I love that song. We said, who am I to deny what the Lord can do? Don't you love that? Because sometimes I sit and I go, man, I don't know, God. Can you do it? Or sometimes when I'm really full of faith, I'll say, God, I know you can do it, but will you do it? I know you can do it, but I don't know if you will do it. Who am I to deny? Hey, listen, somebody's watching online. I'm believing God. Are we believing God in this church family right now? I'm sitting here in the entire church family of Impact Church. We're believing God for your miracle and we're believing God for your healing. We're believing that you're gonna be cancer free. We rebuke cancer in Jesus' name. We rebuke cancer in Jesus' name. We rebuke cancer in Jesus' name. You have no place in a woman of God. You have no place in a man of God. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Number three, look at somebody and tell them this is the fastest sermon PT's ever preached in his life. <laughs> Number three, God is working in all things. He's working in all things. You guys know this scripture, another scripture that the apostle Paul wrote is Romans 8, 28. He said, and we know that in all things, come on, read it with me together. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who what? Love him and who have been called according to his purpose. See, he says, God is working in all things and all things means all things. 
God is working in all things, and all things means all things, even in hardship, even in trial, even in the valleys, right? In Rome, in, in Romans, he says that God works together for the good of those who love him, who love him, and who are called according to his purpose. He said God is working in all things. In Philippians, Paul, the same writer, he says, I can do all things. In Romans, he says, God is working in all things. I think Philippians is a must read. If you've never read the entire book of Philippians, you need to read it today. It's four chapters long. It won't take you very long. Philippians is called the book of joy. Isn't that awesome? It is because he wrote it from prison. How can you be in prison and write a book of joy? Because joy isn't about the external. It's about the internal. It's not about what's happening around me. It's about what's happening within me. So I can write a book of joy. It's a book of joy. I think it's incredible. Philippians is known as a book of joy. Paul's not just in prison. He's literally shackled to a Roman guard. Things don't always go as planned, do they? Can anybody preach that sermon? If you can preach that sermon, raise your hand. Things don't always go as planned. You can preach that sermon? You're preaching it next week. You're my new preacher, my substitute preacher next Sunday. If you can preach that sermon, all right, I'm going to preach it with you. He's, he, it's like, man, things don't always go as we think. I would say it like this. Things never. I mean, like, have never gone as I thought. Never, but God is still working in all things. Things didn't go as planned for Paul. Life is not fair, and life wasn't fair to Paul. You know, I know there's all this teaching that like, man, if we just love God and tithe, life's gonna be good. No, it's not. You're gonna have hardships. You're gonna have valleys. You're gonna have problems. You're gonna have relationship problems. You're gonna have stress. You're gonna have fears. You're gonna have everything that the non-believer has. The difference is that you have the power of Jesus Christ that dwells in you, the power of the Holy Spirit that will give you peace that surpasses all understanding anyway. And he says, while he's in prison, he's like, he's not in prison for like murdering somebody. He wasn't in prison for being like a dope dealer. He's in prison for being a hope dealer. You know what I'm saying? He's just going around preaching Jesus. He was so full of God, so anointed that the Bible says his shadows would like heal people and stuff. That's dope. He's giving people hope. He's giving people love. He's giving people Jesus Christ. Why is Jesus so offensive even today in 2024? He is a God of love, unconditional love. What's offensive about unconditional love? Man, he's in prison. He's chained to a Roman garden prison. His future's up in the air. We know the end of the story. You know when you read a, a book and then a movie comes out? You already know the story, right? But, but, but like... He doesn't know the end of the story. He's in prison. He's facing maybe being put to death for preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And eventually he was put to death for preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. He's in prison in Rome where he writes this book of joy where he writes things like this in chapter one. He says, for me to live is Christ and to die is Gain. Come on, somebody. Listen, I'm going to live, and if I live, I'm living for Jesus. But if I die, I'm going to be in the presence of Jesus. So that is a gain. He says, while in prison, shackled to a Roman guard, in chapter 2, he says, don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others, Scottsdale, Arizona. He left that part out, but I'm putting it in there. He said, be humble, thinking of others better than yourself. Don't look out for your own interests only, but take and interest in others. We need that. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. He's in prison, facing a death sentence. 
It's in chapter three where Paul says, brothers and sisters, I don't consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, one thing I do. Listen, if there's one thing that I want you to do today, he says, forgetting what is behind, come on. I'm going to forget what is behind and I'm going to strain toward what is ahead because sometimes, man, focusing on the future takes every ounce of strain I got because my default wants to go, look what they did to me. Look what I did to them. My default, he says, I need to strain toward what is ahead. I press on. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. It's in Rome. It's in, it's in Philippians chapter 4 while he's in prison in Rome attached to a Roman guard where he says rejoice in the Lord always and I will say it again. Rejoice. Come on. Rejoice. It's a book of joy. It's in Romans chapter 4 where he says don't be anxious about anything but in everything in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving present your request to God oh I love this next part and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus if you've ever seen somebody and their world looks like it's falling apart, and it looks like everything around them is chaotic, but they seem so full of peace, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. Oh, I love that. It, it doesn't make sense, does it? It doesn't make sense. Man, I should be freaking out right now. I should be tripping right now. I should be full of stress. I should be anxious. I should be anxious. The, the doctor gave me a bad report, but I don't know, man. There's something about the way I feel right now. I'm filled with peace. I'm covered in peace. I'm filled. My mind, my heart, it's protected in peace. My spouse just walked down on me. I don't know. I feel a peace about it. Man, God's peace. Supernatural Peace of God. It's in Philippians chapter 4 where Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. It's in Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 where he said, my God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory. Incredible. Impact church is incredible. He's wrongfully locked up yet full of joy. He's physically locked up but spiritually free because his joy was not placed in the things of this world but in the things of God's word. Things didn't go as planned. Things didn't turn out like he thought they would. Maybe he thought he'd be preaching at the Colosseum in Rome, not from a prison. Man, I'm going to be preaching at crusades in the Colosseum in Rome. But God had a different plan. Instead, I'm preaching in prison, attached to a guard, writing letters to encourage churches in different cities. So no chains. Somebody say no chains. chains. Somebody say it again. No chains, no chains. will ever stop me. Yeah. Do you believe that? Yeah. If you got to march with chains, you keep marching. I'm going to keep marching for Jesus Christ. Hey, this numbness might be a certain type of chain. That's okay. I'm going to keep marching. If I got to drag some chains around, I'm going to keep moving. Come on. Somebody needs to move with me. You need to move with me. I'm going to keep marching. I'm going to keep moving. I'm going to keep walking. The chains of failure, they're not going to keep me. No, 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 no. The chains of failure, they're not going to keep me. The chains of depression, they're not going to keep me. The chains of fear and anxiety, they're not going to keep me. Bound up. The chains of addiction. Come on, somebody needs to be set free from addiction today. Somebody needs to be set free from addiction today. These chains are not going to keep me locked up. So I may not be able to do things the way I used to do things, but I'm still going to do things for Jesus Christ. I'm still preaching in prison and people are getting saved. I'm not preaching in a coliseum. I'm writing letters. It's not flashy, 
But you know what? It's going to change people's lives 2,000 years from now in Scottsdale, Arizona. I'm writing letters because God's ways are not our ways, and God has a bigger plan than what we see right in front of our faces. See, God has a bigger plan for you as well. Nero's, Nero's family, they're getting saved and finding Jesus because they're all chained to Paul every day. Have you ever thought that maybe your chains are actually about getting somebody else free? Your pain, your problems might not even be about you. He says, in all things, in all things, but in all things we know that God works for the good of those who love him and have been called according to his purpose. All things means all things. I want, to, I, want to, I want to close this a prayer, but I want to read some scripture. All things means all things. Would you say that again? All things means all things. I want, I want you, if you would, would you, would you close your eyes with me? I'm going to give you this last point, and you can write it down later. Because it's a quick one. Because Paul also said in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, he said, therefore, if anyone is in Christ... He is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So our fourth point today is in Christ, all things are made new. Yeah. All things means all things are made new. Your heart can be made new again. Your mind, Romans 12, it says, the renewing of your mind, renewing, the renewing of your mind. Your mind can be made new. Your marriage, it can be made new again. Your health, it can be made new. Who am I to deny what the Lord can do? Who am I? God, you make all things new. God, I'm praying for new things today. God, I'm praying for new things today. I'm praying for new relationships. I'm praying for a brand new marriage, the same marriage, God, but cleansed and purged and healed. God, to it's so whole that it's a brand new thing in our lives. God, I pray for new in our bodies today. God, I pray for new in our minds today. I pray for new in our hearts today. I pray for new, God, in our spirits, in our emotions today. God, I pray for new outlooks, positive outlooks in life. I can, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. So God, we pray today for a new. The word of God says that you put a new spirit in me. God, put a new spirit, God, out with the old and in with the new. God, out with the old way of thinking, my old habits, my old addictions. God, today, I want to walk in the new. I want to walk in the new, God. I want to walk in the new. Today you're here. I, I want to invite you into a new life with Jesus Christ. I want to invite you right now. Come, come in. The Bible says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. God is knocking today. He's knocking on the door of your heart. And he says, will you open up? Will you open up? Because I want to come in. I want to come in and I want to make all things new. Forget the past and straining toward what is ahead. Today, if that's you and you say, PT, I want to, I want to experience new life in Jesus Christ today. Would you raise your hand? Would you raise your hand? I want to experience new life in Jesus Christ. I see a, a lot of hands. I'm so proud of you. So proud of you. I want to experience new life, new life, new life. Anybody else? I want to experience new life today. And if your hands raised, I, I just want you to pray. I want you, I want you to say, Jesus, today, I want new life. Jesus, today, I want new life. 
God, in Christ all things are made new. All things, all things. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, new creation, all things have passed away. The old is out. The new has come. Behold, all things have been made new. We thank you for the cross. We thank you for your death, your resurrection. We thank you for unconditional love. We thank you for healing. We thank you for wholeness. We thank you for restoration. We thank you for forgiveness of our sins. God, forgive us. God, forgive us. God, I repent. I repent. We repent. Forgive us. God, please forgive us. Do you repent? Come on, somebody. Anybody say, God, I repent. I repent. God, I repent. I repent. God, I'm so sorry. God, I pray. Psalm 51, God, renew a right spirit within us. Create in me a clean heart, oh God, and renew a right spirit in me. God, I'm so sorry. God, thank you that you make all things new.